chasing you or pursuing you, what are they going to do when they catch you? I got him. That's the prize. So in a way, yeah, he was the prize. She was chasing him. It was only So, hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lauren, and if you're a return, welcome back. I really think, like, my channel is just about to take a whole new direction. I doubt anybody, like, really cares right now, but probably gonna change my channel name, Lauren, the real Lauren. Um, and we're just gonna be talking and stuff. We're just gonna be talking and And today, we're gonna be talking about Simone Bow's husband. Now, it seems like now more than ever, we keep seeing and Hearing about instances where women, especially black women, at that, emphasis on black women, because I really think that plays a key role in this and we're gonna get into that later. But black women are seemingly being humbled by their spouses. And one of our most recent victims, our good sister, Simone Bowles. All right, let's roll the clip. Let's roll the clip. Mm -hmm. okay. It's on my Instagram, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this might be. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I see what's up, and then I still waited. I'm like, man, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I, you know, take a shower and everything. Then I come back to my phone, and then she messages me on the app, like, hey, you know what I mean? And I'm, man, that's up, man. This gotta be fake. Like, I don't know. Just, I didn't know who she was at the time, but like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she gotta be good if I have Olympic channels. And we're in camp. We're in camp. Late, late, late July, early August. So I'm not paying attention to, you know, so I never would have had a moment to where I would have watched, like, you know. Jonathan, I'm gonna let you finish your story, man. Continue. Shot her shot. She, flipped, she did, though. She did, though. <laughs> because if she wouldn't have messaged me, chances what chances are, like, I probably wouldn't have. I probably was just, mine would have went somewhere else and wouldn't have thought to, you know. Um, but she, she measured me and I mean, like I said, the rest is history, man. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put you up, little boy. I'm sorry. I'm back. Okay. okay. And I got me a little sparkling water. What is this? Strawberry mango? Yeah. Okay. So, mm, the internet has been in a doozy, okay, over this little interview. I don't know. It's going so far to say that people think that she needs to divorce this man, which I think, like, you, you know, come to break. For real. But let's see what the comments have been saying. I think I got this off of Twitter. What they said on Twitter? What they been saying? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, cause we about to get all the way up in it. So they on TikTok asking their husbands if they know who Simone Biles is and they're asking if they know her husband. And you know, obviously the answer is we don't know. We don't know that man, I'm sorry. The Simone Biles husband thing is extremely example of what we already know. Women can excel at the highest levels, transcend the highest levels, and some of y'all will say our lives are magnificent and a male-dominant spaces equal to our greater than her achievements. Wow. They kind of ate that. Last but not least, y'all, uh, from a guy, obviously, I need not say after I read it. Y'all really mad that a woman actually chased the man that she wanted. And I'm not gonna lie, he ate that too, and this is what a lot of people not not seeing and not understanding and we gonna get into that today but like i said the internet they've been in a doozy about a clip and me personally i watched the rest of the interview not the whole hour because i really don't care nothing about football at all so i couldn't watch the whole thing but for most of the parts that she was speaking i watched you know the other parts of the interview with both of them where that didn't go viral or whatever and yeah, it's a lot to unpack here, to say the least. But needless to say, excuse me, we're all on the outside looking in. Did y'all say that she needs to divorce this man? Y'all need to get a grip, and quickly. Because, yeah, it might be a red flag. I'm not saying that it's not a red flag, but that's that, this is a that's a breach. Divorce is a breach. They, there could be so many other options before divorce, but y'all are like, nope, you need to leave them right now. Chill, chill, y'all, chill. Get a grip on reality, please. Okay. Now, I feel like there's something uh, that I, I was watching a video about women being humble before this even went viral, some on or whatever. And the quote said, and I'm gonna insert like who I was watching at the time, because I forget her name, but I love watching her. I am, I too am a spoiled girl, period. But she said, being humbled is a projection. Just by showing up, has already put them down and that's your power. And honestly, she did her big one with that one. Because to me, in the interview, it seems like that would describe their relationship perfectly in regards to career and maybe even financial dynamic, which is the only reason why I could think of that he would lie about not knowing her. It seemed like he did want to humble her 
and when you are with somebody that's like super famous like that, you know the guy like you don't want to feel like a fan girl so you're going to say i feel like that was probably a lie that he made up when he first even met her and of course once you tell a lie you gotta keep that lie up he knew who she was let's be so serious it would have been so hard to not know who she was at the time at at the peak of her career you couldn't turn on the tv you couldn't look on your phone or do nothing without hearing you couldn't get on twitter or nothing without hearing the name simone Biles. let's be for real so for him to say oh we didn't have cable and i was like it happened nigga you had that phone you knew who she was But, and it's for an obvious reason. And now we're gonna get into this part of accepting inadequacies as a man in a patriarchal society. And I hope I'm saying that word right. Cause if not, that is embarrassing. But first, let's look at the word patriarchy. Let's look at that word real quick. Just so that I know that I'm using the right. So we're here, not like that. So we're here, a system of society or government in which the father or the eldest male is the head of the family and descent is traced through the male line, okay? Let's zone in on that, head of the family, okay? A system of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it, okay? The, a society or community organized on patriarchal lines. Let me, excuse me. Patriarchal lines, all right, now, Let's get into the head of the household, breadwinner, whatever, whatever mindset. That is a big part of it, okay? The, a society or community organized on a patriarchal line. Let me, excuse me. Patriarchal lines, all right. Now, let's get into the head of the household, breadwinner, whatever, whatever mindset. That is a big part of the patriarchy. It is very hard to accept inadequacies as a man in a society where they tell you, you have to be this, 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 that. You gotta be a bear with it, you gotta be a head of the household, da, da, da. At a certain point, you know, we have to choose, like, when are we gonna make a change, you know what I'm saying? Like, what he said was bad, but it's a, a outcome of society. I really hope y'all are following me, because sometimes the man isn't gonna be a breadwinner, I'm sure that he is not. There's no way. It's no way on God's green earth he is the breadwinner in that relationship. So just in terms of that, he is in terms of the patriarchy, being ahead of the household, he is already inadequate. So yeah, he's gonna try to find any way possible to humble her. I didn't even know her. Who is that? I don't even know her. Yeah, he's gonna try to find a way to humble her. And even in the interview, uh, one of the interviewees said, this part didn't go viral, and I'll play the kid lip. So, it's safe to say that in terms of her being a gymnast, you'll never equate to what she is as a gymnast, as a football player. And he kind of like laughed it off. To me, it was a, like a laugh to keep from crying type of vibe. She he will never be planet. as good as a safety as yeah. this little motherfucker is as a gymnast. <laughs> <laughs> you agree, bro? You know what? But then she had to butt in. And to me, this was maybe like stroking his insecurity or trying to build it back up or whatever. But she said, well, I he might. Because the other day I said, you know what? In a couple years, nobody is going to call him Simone Biles' husband. They'll call me Jonathan Owen's wife. Speaking of, that's, I don't know if you so saw sweet. it. On Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. And that's the only reason why I remember his name. Because I it flabbergasted that she would say such a thing. He will never. Except the inadequacies in patriarchal society. It can be so hard for men to do that. And I feel like we make it hard. So, I mean, is it bad what he said? Yes. But I wouldn't have expected nothing different. That's why I can't even date me. But yeah. Now, why saying things like that can be harmful, especially long term? Essentially, you are living your life. For me, I mean that that's just what it is. But I 
at the same time, isn't that not what we teach women to do? Let's wake up. Like, seriously, I feel like even down to taking a man's last name. Oh, I want my legacy to live on. What about my legacy as a woman? Does the legacy of my last name like not matter? Like, and that's why I plan to hyphenate my name. I'm not, I don't even date men, but if and when I do get married, more than likely to a woman, I plan to hyphenate because there is legacy and power in my last name too. Give me your life. In, in my eyes part of patriarchy, taking a man's last name. All right, now, men being the head of the household. Some men can't even think. Some men think they are entitled to these things and it's just like, why would you be the head of the household? What do you even lead, for real? John, let me not even come. <laughs> let me not even come in. But he's not even leading the team for vic to, to victory. How are you leading the household? I digress. But we also have to hold ourselves accountable as a society. Like, these are the things that we are teaching and instilling in our young men, in our young women. Cause hold on, hold on now. Y'all kept saying, oh, like what, what he said was so embarrassing. All he said was the truth. Other than the fact that he didn't know her. When he was telling a story about how she drove 45 minutes, she was the one who messaged first. What? She was the one who liked the pictures on Instagram. Was what he said embarrassing? Or was what she was doing embarrassing? She was chasing that man. She was in fact chasing that man. And I know for a lot of people that gives people the egg. Me, I would never be caught chasing a man, ever. I, like I said, I don't like men. But if I would not be chasing him. No, with that being said, like when he was saying that he was the prize, I mean, she kind of made him the prize. If you were chasing somebody, once you finally catch it, what you gonna do? You gonna say, I got it. You're going to you're going to treat that like the prize. But if somebody is chasing you or pursuing you, what are they going to do when they catch you? I got him. That's the prize. So in a way, yeah, he was the prize. She was chasing him. It was only the truth. And she ain't she ain't had no opposition. So it it must have been what, how it went down. All right. Bottom line is oh. Also, why saying things like this can be harmful, especially long term. And even this my all I can think of is resentment. Like the fact that she had to step in in the interview and be like, well, one day they're gonna call you. They're gonna call me Jonathan Owen's wife. The fact that she had to step in and say that, it seems like it's like, I don't know if it's something that's recurring. Some, obviously something is something that they've talked. It didn't really sound like acceptance and it didn't really sound like that he's accepted that she's bigger than him. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's, it sounds like he's still waiting on something, something that might never happen. And he has to be willing and ready to accept that, you know, I might always be in her, what is it? Her shadows, yeah. It, it might not never happen to where somebody's gonna call Simone Biles Jonathan Owen's wife, you know? And I feel like if that doesn't happen, it might lead to resentment in the relationship. And I feel like that's why this type of thing is a red flag. Well, not to everybody, it's a red flag to me too, but also, I don't think divorce should be the first thing on everybody's mind. Like, damn, that's the problem. Nah, y'all don't give people chances no more. Dang. Okay, now let's get into instances where celebrity women were humbled by their partner and it turned out bad because this, we have seen this time and time again. The first one that comes to mind, I'm sure everybody knows, Kiki Palmer. Shout out to my girl. Kiki, do you love me? We know what happened with that. The uh, first, it was, it, it was always in my mind like, who is this dude and why is she with him for real? Of all the guys that she could have dated in the industry, like, you know, like, why? Ooh, something in my eye, y'all. Something in my eye. They're trying to get me for exposing the truth. It just didn't make sense to me. Like, why him? Like, I mean, he's, he's a handsome man. Was well, That was my initial thought, but. Who is he for real? And then, you know, and I'm sure everybody had those thoughts. Then it came out with the tweet, your mom, blah, 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 whatever. And now when I saw that, I'm, everybody knew it was a red flag. Everybody knew they grilled him as they should. A very misogynistic, controlling ass thing to say about the mother of your child. And then um, publicly at that, you got her number. Could have called her, could have, no, let's not even get, get into that. This story is not about them. I said that to say, that happened, she went back, the time that 
was revealed that he was abusive towards her. It was before that tweet even came out. So this has been an ongoing thing, back and forth, whatever, whatever thing that she chose to go back to. He said it was a red flag, red flag, red flag. Sometimes people are not gonna listen. Another, we all know who her baby daddy is, Future. Now she has found a loving and amazing husband that is also in the NFL, Russell Wilson. And we actually know who he is. So yeah, but. Before that, she was with Future and they broke up, but it's like he just cannot keep her name out of his mouth. I don't know what's that all about, but that, I know that shit is embarrassing as fuck. And I know when they was together, everybody used to think like, what do she even, why are they even? And now while Future might not have had a specific instance where he tried to humble Sierra, the fact that your her name always in your grown ass mouth grown ass man mouth at that embarrassing embarrassing okay Con conclusion let's wrap it up we don't know these folks in real life let's start there we don't know these folks in real life at all and I keep saying that I keep telling y'all we have to get a grip on our parasocial relationships we have to get a grip Quick. Because the fact that y'all think they just gonna break up because y'all said so. Are y'all insane in the membrane? Come on now. Okay. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know. In the interview, also, I feel like this was a more positive side of the interview. He mentioned that they go to therapy. They go individually and they go together. Hopefully, uh, this, is, this is something that they take to their therapist and unpack that because, um, yeah. It's gonna take a therapist to truly unpack and know what's going on behind closed doors, da da da. Why the hell he would say that he don't know her, lying ass. And just the whole dynamic of chasing the man, the man who cries, like, I don't know. It, to me, for me, I was like, man, it don't seem sustainable for a healthy relationship. That's all I'm saying. But, and at the same time, we don't know these people. Okay, if there was something going on behind closed doors, it would be her lessons to learn. That's another thing. We have to let these people live. Like sometimes we be forgetting that celebrities are like people too. They're gonna make mistakes and they're going, of course their mistakes are more public. Cause it wasn't televised when you was going back to that nigga three times. That ain't shit nigga that cheated on you. It, that wasn't televised. You know what I'm saying? Their, their mess ups are televised. They're still on social media, you know, y'all's not. So let's not, don't say what you woulda, shoulda, coulda done, cause some of y'all not doing it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Let people go through stuff. Let people learn on their own. Even celebrities gotta learn on their own. All we can do is hope that they go to therapy together like Jonathan mentioned in the show and unpack whatever that was, okay? Cause like, yeah, it all it takes is a small seed of resentment to grow into a bigger resentment and then like they're not gonna last and it could grow and fester if it goes unchecked. We just need to dismantle the patriarchy. We need, that's all I got for y'all. Of course, I'm not a therapist. I'm really just a girl with a camera and a big ass mouth. If I was making sense, I feel like I offered a really different perspective, but what y'all think? So yeah, if you like this video, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below any video you wanna see me do next. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. And don't forget to keep it cute. Bye y'all.